Assalamu alaikum everybody. This is Al Moses and I am very lucky here to have been joined by Adib Yuxul. Now Adib, who those of you who don't know, is, is a prominent Kurdish American activist and Quran scholar for over 30 years. He's a professor of philosophy, author of more than 30 books and about 100 articles in English and Turkish. So the reason I asked Brother Adib to join me and have a chat to me about is is something as a student of the Quran I have struggled with for quite a while. And that is basically all the roadblocks that kind of stop our journey towards understanding and making a difference between Islam of the Quran and Islam of the tradition. So it's something that I know Brother Deep has done quite a lot of work on. And what I thought was we would come and pick his brain today. So before we have a chat, proper chat, how are you doing, brother? <laughs> we, we, we have to go through gambit how are you i am doing very well what about you and you are fine uh, too we are all fine let's start it okay so, absolutely no, god no. bless you uh, in fact i have written an article long time ago while i was uh, at the university in communication class on gambit why okay. we start our communication with how are you and how are you the question is obvious. The answer is expected. Yes. No one say I am very bad. Who are you to ask me what I am doing? Uh, yes. But uh, it is preparation. Our mind, we are kind of like a computer. Imagine from one program transition to another program. Mm. We need some time. We see a new face. And then suddenly we need to recognize. But it gives us some time to prepare ourselves. Also testing our voice and stuff. There is some uh, functional um benefit there yes. which is which is quite interesting because what you said kind of i think links up to what we are going to be talking about which is the sense of expectation so when you start talking about something or to somebody for the first time even on a topic that you think you know about we all tend to fall into the traditional patterns that we're comfortable with we don't want them to change and if there is change exactly we, routine yeah exactly get certain routine Yes, yes. So on, on that, which I think is a very interesting segue, and for those who listen to us afterwards, this was not planned. This is, this, this just happened. So my, my question really is, um, well, you know this, but just to set the scene, us Muslims from Pakistan and India generally are very unable to appreciate the Quranic terms and differentiate between them. We understand the Islam of the Quran through the prism of tradition. We really find it hard to get out of you know, the group think and the group, group um, I guess, group speak. What, what's, what's your opinion on that? Why do you think this is something that happens well, to us? My brother, I don't call uh, the so-called Muslim world as Muslim. They have nothing to do, unfortunately. I used to be a Sunni. Hmm. And I don't think they are Muslim in sense the Quran described. Because they are not peacemaker. And uh, Islam and Iman in the Quran are two sets. One set is more general than the other. They kind of overlap, but every mu'min is a Muslim. However, every Muslim, every peacemaker may not be a mu'min. In chapter 49, a person who says that he is mu'min, the Quran says, nope, the, the Iman means trust in God has not entered in your heart. You are not a monotheist and you are only Muslim, means a peacemaker. Therefore, the Medina, city of Medina, means uh, uh, civilization. Mm. Medinia comes from that. Uh, the civilized city was established based on uh, the ultimate goal of establishing peace in the society. If you remember in the Quran, the first crime committed by human being the first crime in heaven was associating partner to God, believing in Satan, not trusting God. Hmm. That was the reason we were hurled, were uh, basically thrown to this uh, lowest of low. It is a dunya. Dunya means the lowest, uh, lower universe, yeah. lower yeah. heaven, whatever you call it, a dunya, hmm. sama a dunya. Yes, uh, but. Uh, this, the first crime on earth, on this planet earth, was committed as a killing um, brother. And uh, when God wanted to create a new species, uh, Khalifa means the one that follows the previous species. That means before humans, there were other species on earth. And the, the human would emerge through evolution and through becoming... Uh, receptive to God's new program, which is called human program. 
And the angels objected. They say, what are you doing? Are you going to create another violent species here? Mm. God says, you don't know what I know. Means that this human has also potential for, be, for making the peace. Now, Medina was a uh, multinational, according to the Quran, multiracial, multinational, multi-legal um, uh, jurisdiction. And there were Jews and Christians and Mushriks in Medina, and they didn't accept Muhammad as a prophet, as a mm. messenger, but they accepted him as a just leader that would follow uh, earth, the one, the known uh, uh, truth uh, about the society, and uh, would the, uh, make decisions based on justice, would it consult people, will do istishara, and would be a just leader, would establish peace, justice, and freedom, which he did. Yeah. Um, but later, uh, the Islam was confused with Iman, and that uh, uh, kind of one is Iman between human being and God, the creator. That is philosophical and theological and spiritual, personal, Iman. As far as Islam is peacemaking, of course, every mu'min is also submitting to God in peace, Islam. But those who are not mu'mins, they accept peace and uh, they may not be mu'mins, but we have to live together, respect each other's rights and protect each other and stand together against aggression. In that regard, in that regard, the, today is unfortunately Islamic world, if you say close to Islam, are the Western, uh, some countries in the West, which they establish a relatively good society. There is justice, there is a dignity of humans, there's certain e equality in front of uh, law, and uh, like no Northern European countries, even your country perhaps is much closer to Islam, yes. So if, if, I, if I might ask you a question on that front, because you, you actually refer to Islam as peacemaking. A Muslim is a peacemaker, right? So this, again, straight away, kind of goes against the grain of what, the, what we, the traditional Muslims, would understand Islam to be. So for us, it's a set of rituals and sort of things that you say and you, way, you dress a certain way, you speak certain terms, etc. But this is not quite how the Quran expresses a Muslim or how it how it defines it. So there's a disconnect there. Why do you think that's happened? Well, the disconnect, first of all, the Quran is the most read book in the so-called Muslim world or Sunni and Shiite world, the most read book, the least understood and most betrayed book on earth. Absolutely, the Muslim world, let's use it uh, the wrong name, Muslim, call it, Mm. And the Muslim world have betrayed the Quran. And therefore, in the day of judgment, the messenger will say, وَقَالَ رَسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Yes, my people have deserted the Quran while they were expecting Muhammad will save them from God. Imagine. Mm. God's, Muhammad's mercy comes from God. فَبِمَا uh, مِنْ uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, from God's blessing, you uh, treated them kindly. It mm. is from Rahmat comes from God. And God's Rahmat has encompasses everything. But they think that God is not really trustworthy. They don't trust God. Mm. Neither God's judgment, neither God's Rahmat. They, they want Muhammad, their idol, save them from God in the day of judgment, Shafa. The believing Shafa is idol worship according to Quran. Quran absolutely reject the so-called saving from God, an intermediary, another human God, demigod will save. And while they are expecting Muhammad will save them from God, Muhammad will reject them. We say, my Lord, my people have deserted the Quran. It will be Yawm at tagabun yeah. They will be shocked that day. It's because in the name of God, they fabricated so many lies, so many insults to Prophet Muhammad, so many lies attributed to God. They turned God's incredible uh, progressive system that the teaching that promote reason, promote progress, promote, promote science, 
promote equality, egalitarian society, promotes uh, equality of humans regardless of their race and sex, like in chapter 49, verse 13, many other verses, and uh, promotes distribution of wealth, promotes peace and justice on earth. They mm. turn it just the opposite. And yeah. um, unfortunately, they, when I have proven thousands of times, thousands of times, literally, that today's so-called Muslims, though they give lip service to Quran or Muhammad or God, they don't. They don't trust God. They don't believe Muhammad was messenger of God. They believe Muhammad were, was more than messenger of God. Messenger means delivering the message as it is, mm -hmm. like a postman. Then they also... They don't really uh, trust the verses of the Quran. If you, I, I, many times I recite them, remind them a verse of the Quran. They say, yes, this is verse, but they start with but. Yes. But Ibn Felan, Abu Felan said this, or Prophet Muhammad said this, a lie in the name of Prophet Muhammad, as the Prophet Muhammad was created something against God. Just the opposite. The Quran orders Prophet Muhammad follow the book in chapter five um uh, we have to follow the messenger messengers brought us this book and therefore following the messenger means following the message mm. and we have to follow god how do you follow god by following the messenger what is messenger message the same mm. risale rasul never says god follow god and muhammad or this and that it is about the message. Yeah. And Muhammad was himself guide, was guided by the Quran. You didn't know what is Iman, what is book. Mm. And the Quran guided you. God has guided you through the Quran. God find you uh, misguided, mediated, yes, lost, lost mm. in terms of guidance. And he guided you. Mm. Muhammad was guided by the Quran. And chapter 5 says... You have to make uh, uh, judge among them according to this Quran. They want to deviate you from the Quran, separate you from the Quran. Mm. They want you bring another Quran and Ghayri has, uh, has a, a Quran, a book of recitation other than this. They want you bring. Yeah. If you do, you remember this verse? Mm. If he if Muhammad has made up some words against us, we'd punish him. And therefore, they distorted some verses of the Quran in order to insert volumes of books to the Quran and, in fact, um, overwhelm the Quran. In fact, they prefer many hadiths uh, to the Quran. They distort many verses of, of the Quran by hadiths. Hadith mm -hmm. is a uh, fabrication of Satan. It is uh, to create a rival uh, teaching to distort the Quran, basically conspiracy against the Quran. Yeah. Centuries after Prophet Muhammad, they were able to do that and they created volumes of volumes of false teachings in the name of Prophet Muhammad. Exactly like after Jesus, they fabricated so many lies, the Catholic Church, how they distorted the message of Jesus. The same, the same. I, in... Uh, Manifesto for Islamic Reform in tables, I compare the verses of the Quran mm. with the Hadith and Sunnah. I have seen and that. They yeah. separate God. One more point, and then I will give it to you. They separate mm. God from Messenger. God says, Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul. For, uh, obey God and obey Messenger. Obey Messenger doesn't mean Messenger has a different Sharia. Or different hukum than the Quran. No, 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 no. Messenger, the same messenger. What is Belah? Chapter 6, verse 19. Say, This book is given to me, in, revealed to me in order to deliver to you and those who receive. This is exactly what Muhammad got. But they, uh, therefore, they separate. A messenger from God, they say God eshit. Turkish word came to mind. <laughs> I didn't understand God that word. <laughs> and then messenger equals hadith. Hello, you just separated messenger from his mission was deliver the Quran. 
not make up stories against the Quran. Mm. It's unbelievable. They exactly, God says, they want to separate God from his message. They say, Ati Allah means follow the Quran, but Ati uh, Rasul, it is not following the Quran. It is following Bukhari. Mm. Who is Bukhari? An ignorant idol worshiper who came through 230 years after Prophet Muhammad, who collected all hearsay stupid collections and mix it with some good stories because Satan puts some sugars into the poison in, in the plate of the poison it has some sugar, some candies in order to allure you. There are some good hadiths over there you can find yeah. better in Chinese proverbs or in any and millions of books you can find many good wisdom for example read the king Ariella's incredible beautiful things or socrates plato or many others later or tolstoy or dostoevsky goodness sakes there are incredible beautiful words eh? makes few commonsensical stuff but incredible insult to prophet muhammad to to god and uh, to uh, very destructive teachings like a promotion of misogyny and uh, debasing uh, women, saying uh, women naqisatul dini wal aql, women mm. is deficient of it is in Bukhari and in many others, deficient yeah. of aql, reason, and uh, deen, and or uh, the most of the hell is filled with women. Imagine, according to Quran, most of the enemies of Prophet Muhammad, almost 99% were men. Who yes. opposed Moses? Who are the enemies? Pharaoh mm. was the political leader. His military leader, Haman, was man. Harun was the filthy billionaire rich of the time. He was man, correct? Mm. And Sah uh, Sahirun, uh, correct? Those, uh, uh, Those magicians. magicians. Yeah. They were yeah. all men. Mm. And Jesus, the Pharisees, they were all men. The Roman <laughs> kings or commanders, they were all men. Look at throughout history and yeah. look at the prisons, mostly men filled with especially the killers, murderers. Look at the leaders around the world, the owners of the banks and uh, those who manufacture bloody weapons and to, or those leaders who create divisions among humans, shed blood on earth, mostly men. But and the clergyman who lies in the name of God, mm -hmm. who is more wor who is worse than those who fabricate lies and attribute to God. And they are the Christian clergyman, the Sunni, Sunni clergyman, Shi clergyman, Hindu clergyman. They are mostly 99% men. But hell is filled with women, according yeah. to Hadith. Yeah, and this or is quite stoning mm. people to death. Which is not, not Quranic. Yeah. Not into the Quran or yeah. killing the apostate, basically yeah. eliminating freedom of thinking and freedom of questioning, freedom of choice. So many, or slavery, reinstating state, slavery, according to the Quran, is the worst crime, the worst, because it is idol worship. Yeah. If someone owns a slave, it becomes like Pharaoh. Pharaoh didn't say, I created you. I'm the best. Yeah, it was not as stupid, and no one would believe him. But he was really claiming that, and he was controlling their lives. He was yeah. controlling every moment. He was basically he made them slave to him. Therefore, he said, "Rub," and slave is abd. How can you have an abd? Mm. If you have an abd, it will be Abdul Musa. If I have an abd, a slave, I'll, he will be Abdul Adib instead of Abdullah, and I will be claiming that I am an your rub. Yeah. I am your Lord. In fact, on, Quran, on this... The Quran, there is no Lord besides God. The only Lord is God. Therefore, slavery, according to the Quran, is the worst crime. And they distorted some verses of the Quran to justify slavery. Anyway, through Hadith and so-called Sunnah, hmm. they basically, they destroyed the teaching of Prophet Muhammad in the name of Prophet Muhammad. How Christians yeah. did in the name of Jesus brought Trinity and many other corruptions. Yeah, now uh, to be to be honest, uh, you've kind of talked uh, on pretty much everything uh, on, on a surface level that I wanted to talk to you about, which is fantastic. It's like uh, you kind of were kind of reading my mind, or you, you had access to my notes here, and you knew exactly what to say, which was which was fantastic. So I, I thought I'll add a point which I think I read from you. So you talked about rub, 
the rub is in the Quran really only ever meant for God, the the the, the protector, the nourisher of the universe, the the alamin. But interestingly, Maulana, that we tend to call a religious scholars, also tends to be a term in the Quran only for God. But we Mashallah. seem to have misappropriated that term for humans. Beautiful. Look at Pope. Pope, in the Christian terminology, they call God Papa, mm. Father. In religious context, the word Father in the Christian church is used for God. But this guy comes, he calls himself Pope, Papa, Father. Hello, wants to misappropriate God, kind of confuse himself with God. Mm. Why you call yourself God? You are not people, genealogical, biological father. Mm. You call yourself father in the context of your religion. And in your religion, in your liturgy, the word father is exclusively used for God. Why you are using that word? Why not any other? That's exactly what Satan does. Mm. Satan wants to blur the line between God and messenger and between messenger and those alims, so-called zalims after messengers. Okay. No, and therefore, by this way, they can manipulate people. Hmm. It is a way of manipulating. It is the way to claim uh, arrogance on earth. Uh, it is the greatest arrogance. And uh, the word mawla, as you said, wali is used for humans also. Yes. But, yeah. Wali is, uh, but mawla uh, is also is vertical from the top down. Hmm. Not really friendship. Yeah. Um, and uh, Maula means the one who controls, who provides, who owns. And you cannot, la Maula, the Quran rejects any Maula. Anta Maulana, Fansurna. Hmm. You are our Lord. Anta Maulana. The word Maula is exclusively used for God, and the Quran rejects other Maulas besides God. But in Pakistan, I met some of those people, they were calling themselves Maulana. Yes, it's very common in India as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they are idol worshippers and they have no cares. In Bukhari, there is no really, uh, or Hadith books, Tawheed, there is no really focus on Tawheed. No, uh, and, and that, that's quite interesting, brother, because I, I listened to Sheikh, Farah, uh, Sheikh Farhan as well, Sheikh Farhan al-Maliki. Um, and he, what he said was quite interesting. He said, when I read the Quran, the Mus'haf, it seems to me on every page, there's a reference to ayat, uh, al-ayat al kawniya universal signs. There are references to think, tafakkur, tadabbur, use your mind. But he said, when I opened these books of history, because that's what they are, I found not a single chapter on using your aql. Not a single oh, chapter. I checked the uh, Hadith books. Uh, there is a sunnah.org. Mm. I, I highly recommend you do. Just write Aql. In fact, I made a video about that too. I show it. Okay. Everyone can see it. The word Aql, write in Arabic and then check. You will find, I, I think, if I don't remember, 186 Aql. Wow. Okay. I was very surprised. In the Quran, <laughs> it is mentioned 49 times. Um, mm. uh, yes. uh, and the, the Quran is. It's not as a noun, it is a process, means thinking, inference. And in Allah yaj'alu rissa ala ladhina la yaqilun, chapter 10, verse 100. And, uh, but I was very surprised. Wow. I said, how in the world I didn't notice that these uh, hadith books, uh, I think it was Qutub al has 186 frequency of the word uh, aqal. Is a verb. That sounds good so far. <laughs> huh? Sounds good so far, but I know there's a twist. And then, and then I checked, oh my God, the word akal mostly is used meaning a dia, means uh, the blood money. It's mm. called blood money. If someone kills someone, you do the akal, you give them blood money. It is used in that context, never in the Quran. And in that meaning, meaning means blood money. Another akal means to carry water in a bucket from well to another place. To carry water, akale. <laughs> this mm, is the akal of yeah, yeah. hadith books. Another akal is the one tying the camel's rope to somewhere, anchoring it, tying mm, somewhere. Tying something up, yes. In fact, inference comes from them. Akal means tying something, tying uh, premises to each other and reaching to a conclusion. 
tying according to rules of inference. Mm. By the way, we have 19 rules in, in, of inference we are born with, like yeah. modus ponens, modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, I teach them. In fact, in my book, I have several chapters on these 19 rules of inference. Now, and then finally, I found only very few uh, hadiths where the word aql is used meaning having influence, making influence, thinking. Mm. And they were what? They were about to bash women. To bash wow. women. Wow. Mm. Not a single aql promoting thinking, that not, not a single aql I didn't find. That shows great difference that it is, it shows this devil, this is by Satan, has nothing. No one, this hadith is fabricated not by students of the Quran. They were the enemies of the Quran, ignorant of the Quran, very clear. So what, what, you, what you have said is kind of what I felt as well. So un, unlike you, you've got decades, decades on me. I've only got four years in which I've been trying to understand the Quran using Aqal as we've been talking about. But this disconnect, so all these Quranic terms like shukr, jihad, ibadah, deen, salah, islam, mu'min, rab, in the Quran, when you read them within the text and the context, they mean something very precise. There's precision, there's diqqa, and, and they're very clear. But when you take these terms out of the Quran and try and understand them through orf, or through our history, through our thaqafa, or through these other books of tarikh history, we find them completely different. So this, this well, whole mismatch. Let me tell mismatch. you about the word sunnah. They say Quran and, or sunnah. Sunnah, Quran and sunnah. Goodness said, with this just bifurcation, Du dualism, it is duality, it is a religion of dualism, God plus Muhammad, both of them is the source of religion, but according to Quran, hmm. it is belongs to God alone, not Muhammad plus God, Muhammad was like us, he had to follow God's instruction, now, <laughs> the word sunnah they say, well, what they mean, they mean sunnah Muhammad, well, mm. at that moment, they betray the Quran because the Quran never uses the word sunnah for, in reference to Muhammad. It is always in reference to God. Yeah. Sunnatullah, sunnatullah. Mm. You will not find any change in God's law. It is in the context of God's law in societies. When God yes. sends a messenger, there is a sunnatullah happens. If people... Um, uh, how do you say, continue their uh, crimes and then they will get punished. Yeah, basically, anyway. yeah. Yeah, yes. which, which is absolutely right. So all of these terms are, are completely uh, used differently between the two sources. And and that's why a lot of people today hey, obviously say... I cannot offer you... I have <laughs> Virtually. Uh, star, I can test I, it virtually. Yeah, I, <laughs> if you don't mind... I no, no, go to, ahead. Um, uh, some fruit. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Go for it. And I okay. do appreciate that you're taking time before you go away for, I understand, some, some fun time camping or tramping or whatever the case might be in the mountains. Um, I, I was going to say that even that term you talked about before, Athiyar Allah wa Athiyar Rasul, or sometimes comes as Athiyar Allah wa Rasul. Now, this is me as a student. When I read the basic Arabic, when I read those terms, Muhammad was reading these ayat just like we are. So wasn't he in this ayat being told to follow the Rasul as well? Yeah, amanu. If he was one of those who did Iman, then surely that applied to him as well. And if it did, well, what sunnah or hadith was he following in his term? Yeah. And uh, perhaps I missed what you were saying. The word uh, hadith, uh, for example, they say, وَمَا أَتَاكُمْ رَسُولُ فَخُزُوهُ وَمَا نَاوْكُمْ عَنُوا فَانْتَوُوا Mm. I used to abuse this one when I was a Sunni little young scholar uh, writing books defending Sunni religion. My father was top Sunni scholar in Turkey. If you type my name, Edip Yüksel, and then you will find my father's pictures comes and then my brothers and stuff. Yes. I come from a very prominent family in Turkey. My mother's side is also great sheikh. They are a sheikh in Sufi religion. My father was in uh, just teaching uh, fuqah. Now, uh, um, the word the hadith, uh, if you look at it, uh, 
they take it absolutely from the context. In the context is about, there is an aggression against uh, peacemakers, and then they attack, they cause damage, uh, life and property. And then after that, they left uh, some of their, when they escaped, they left some of their belongings there. And then those belongings belong to what? Belongs to people and it should be distributed accordingly. Mm -hmm. Those who participated in war defended the city, defended the lives and freedoms of people, and also uh, poor, uh, the orphans and people who are in need, uh, they need a share. And therefore, uh, and uh, since there was some uh, kind of debate discussion about who will get what, and the Quran says, uh, and Rasul is the one, uh, he, he, you elected him as a leader, and therefore uh, he will, based on consultation or based on the Quranic instruction, he will distribute it accordingly. And the distribution later in other verses, we see it as uh, one fifth of it is for the orphans, for the poor, uh, for the needy. Mm. Correct? And then, but this has nothing to do about Hadith. It's not about Bukhari. It's not about anything else. It has nothing to do with that. Mm. <laughs> and then they suggest, basically, they do sleight of hand, and then they change this uh, distribution of property at that time to giving Bukhari, who came 230 years, or Tirmizi, or Ibn Majah, or this and that. Yeah, I'm absolutely and, um, Yes, uh, one of their major objection I have to uh, mention, because when we say God's word is Mubin, they don't believe that. Many verses of the Quran says God's word is Mubin. Mm. They say, nope, uh, Ibn Falan, Abu Falan, our alim says the Quran is not Mubin. <laughs> yeah, well, they, the Quran they... says Mufassal repeatedly. Yeah. Min ladun alim in khabir, I think in chapter uh, 11 uh, or Fussilat uh, chapter I it has come up one. to come up one Correct. or two times, yeah. Kitabun, I think Kitabun Fusilat, yeah, something like yes. that, yes. And then uh, it is uh, detailed by God, who mm. knows everything. And uh, no, nope, the Quran is not Mufassal. Where, uh, and then God's word is Tamam, wa tammat kalimat rabbika sidqan wa adla. No, without hadith, it's not Tamam, it's not Tam complete. Yeah, Tamat means complete, yeah. And therefore, they reject dozens, maybe hundreds of verses that the word of God is Mubin, they don't believe it is Mubin, they don't believe God, they don't trust God. God's word is Mufassal detail, the detail in the Quran is sufficient for us. The rest of it we are not, we, we, God has given us mind and already guidance, general principles, under general principles, using our own mind, consulting each other, we can find uh, a solution or we can choose whatever we deem good for us. Yeah. God did not specify, create a kind of, made us robot. You understand? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, uh, and then, but um, they want, they, their approach to the Quran is like the approach, uh, which is criticizing the Quran, approach of uh, Jewish rabbis. When the Quran told them, sacrifice a heifer, mm, it was not yeah. really a ritual. If there was a reason, a very powerful psychological, sociological reason. The reason was this uh, Beni Israel, the children of Israel, was freed uh, through Moses and a a Aaron under the leadership of Aaron and Musa, mm. correct? And they were in Sinai. They were freed, but still some of them missed the kind of certain food there, you know, they are in desert, they don't have the luxury, but they were slaves. Pharaoh was feeding them pretty good because they had to work like animals, correct? Mm. Donkeys, like mules and donkeys. And they start missing that. And they were still, some of them were under the, the they didn't save themselves totally from the cultural, religious um, influence of mm. Pharaoh. They were, uh, Pharaoh's uh, symbol was um, cow or heifer, correct? Uh, what's called golden what? The golden cow, I think. 
Uh, the golden calf, sorry. Calf, yeah. Yeah. And therefore, they had this one, and God wanted them to save them by asking them literally to sacrifice a heifer so that they will cut all psychological connection, remove the influence of Pharaoh's religion, their oppressor's religion. Very interesting this. Mm. That, that was the purpose. And But what happens, the rabbis, uh, the Samri, God says, says Samri, someone who belongs to Samri tribe, wants to distract them from the main purpose, want to make them busy with um, details which has no relevancy. Mm. And they ask Moses, what is the age of this heifer? Mm. Who cares? That's not the purpose. Yeah, what, what is color? the color yeah. of the heifer? Yeah. Whether it, it, it is in the barn or the far. Do you remember these verses? Yeah, yeah. Surah Baqarah. You know, Allah Allah. Yeah. The reason these verses tell us and then God later uh, criticized them. They almost, they did not fulfill what they were ordered to do. Hmm. Because of what? This frivolous question. And the same they ask, how do I pray? Well, God says, Iqama Salat, stand. And then do Ruku. Hadith says Ruku. The Quran says, you don't say the video clips of Prophet Muhammad, how he prayed. Mm. He, the Hadith uses the same word Ruku. When it comes in the Quran, they don't understand Ruku. But when it comes to hadith, oh, it is clear. A sujood, yeah. The hadith says sujood. In fact, hadith books are very confused about salat. You cannot, they are lying. You cannot pray according to hadith books. All confusion, all contradictions. Now, can, can, I, ask uh, a, can I ask a question here? Because I think you made a pretty good point here, Brother D. So you talked about- I finish in half a minute and then. Oh, okay, yeah, go on. Yes. And then when they uh, say, where can I put my hand? Mm. honestly seriously they ask this question where to put my hand while i'm standing exactly what is the color of hafer mm. frivolous question if god wanted you to put your hand somewhere in his detailed mubin book the guide huda in that book god would said it god says nope. god did not explain where to i put my hand mm. i say idiot when you need to stand in the line in any grocery store, do you ask people over there, working people, hey, sir, you told me to stand here. Where mm -hmm. should I put my hand? Yeah, good point. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> you just it do it. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever you put your hand, my dear, as long as you don't put your hand in the pocket of the person next to you. Correct? Yeah. Yes, well, that would be <laughs> okay. a, that would be something good. But they seems... ask this question, this frivolous question, guess yeah. what? In Bukhari, uh, I'm not sure whether Bukhari or in other hadith books, I found 98 hadith fabricated to respond to this fabricated question. They fabricate a question, and then since there is no real anything about that, because Prophet Muhammad maybe sometimes put his hand here, sometimes side, maybe sometimes in his pocket, whatever, he said. And then they made up all these four combinations. According to some hadith, Prophet Muhammad put his hand here. According to some, he put over his belly. Mm. According to some, below his belly. These are all in mezahir. According to some, he released his hand on the side. Yeah. Well, goodness sake. Yeah. It's a stupid question. You, you fabricated 98 sahih hadith. And guess what? You came up with all possible four combinations. Mm. And two dice, you could come up with any of these <laughs> Yeah. This is ridiculous. You cannot pray, Brother Moses, according to their uh, hadith books. They cannot even go to restroom. They cannot even clean their buttock without hadith. Because the same question they should ask us, because the Babu Tahare in hadith books is a long book. Hundreds of hadith about how to clean your buttock, how to mm. enter the restroom, how to sit on the uh, restroom. Yeah, which, which direction? Yeah, which, which direction, direction? Which and, fort? Uh, in yeah. fact, even how many stones to clean. Yes, yes. And about so many stupid things, what to read, what to recite, left, right, all these things. Yeah. Well, why they don't ask us? They should ask us this question too. According to the Quran, we cannot clean our buttock, but without hadith, we cannot. Yes, yeah. without hadith, they cannot clean their buttock. With, without hadith, they cannot eat food. They are becoming incompetent robots and idiots 
by following this fabricated hadith, unfortunately. And then they accuse the Quran for not having these details, which God gave you mind, goodness sake. Yeah, you, you remind me of my, of my daughter. My daughter is 10, my son is 7. So it's like when I say to them, go and do something, sometimes when they're being whining and they don't want to do something, they say, what about this? What about that? What do I do after that? Just like I have to remind them, you understood exactly what I meant. You know what I want. Don't ask questions for details where you and I both know you're just trying to waste time. Because you, you, you know what you're doing and I know what you're doing. It's, it's not winning five, anybody. Verse 101, you just uh, referred to. Is it a Yastar Jilunaka or something? That no, well, I... Uh... Uh, when it's being revealed, yes. Don't ask yes. about things when that's being Do revealed. Do not ask uh, about many things when it is explained. It makes it difficult for you. Exactly. Yeah. God yeah. wants us to, God says, as given your mind, you make your decision. Here are the general principle for you under the, this guidance of my ayah in the book. As long as you don't contradict my ayah, my signs in the book, and my signs in nature, here it is, you have freedom. No, yeah. they want God to tell us what is the color of the heifer, what is the age of the heifer, exactly. Yeah. So, and then when they don't find in God's book, they say, well, God forgot. Yeah. God cannot explain it. God yeah. couldn't explain it well. Or, or Ibn Falan, Abu Falan did what God couldn't do. And yeah. Prophet Muhammad taught God his religion. This is exactly, they are doing that. They are in the business of teaching God and reminding God, God forgot, they are filling the Quran with all that nonsense, even their translations and tafsir filled mm. with lies and distortions. Yeah, they're filling that gap, so to speak. Can, can, can I, if I bring back the conversation to where we started, would I be fair to say that based on what we've talked about, one of the roadblocks that stops us from understanding the Quran and its message and its terms is that we have made four or five golden heifers that we continue to follow and they stand between us and God's path. And I guess if we had to take that example further, would I be justified as a student of the Quran in saying, just like the people of Bani Israel were ordered to sacrifice whatever their attachments were because they were wrong, we as Muslims of today should start doing the same? Absolutely. The, the reason that so-called Muslim world have been Abed at Ta'awud became the uh, slaves uh, of Tawud, the aggressors, the religious leaders or politicians, the kings and sultans, and uh, they have uh, became oppressed. They are not free right now. Look at the 57 countries and there is no freedom there. There is no justice. Their leaders are the most corrupt, the biggest thief, and they are themselves uh, very corrupt people. And um, I describe them like this, when they are They are pharaohs to anyone weaker than them. Mm. They are slaves to anyone powerful than them. That kind of mentality relationship is very dominant in mm. the so-called Muslim world. Yeah. And they worship anyone who is above them, powerful. They basically, they become ra'aya. Uh, ra'aya means hurt for them. Mm. And But anyone, and then in this hierarchy, the most oppressed are children and women in home. Husband usually has the power and uh, very um, usually merciless and dictator over his kids mm. and the wife and the children are suffering the most. And when children are raised in such an oppressive family structure, and unfortunately they don't develop, develop self-confidence, free choices, and uh, critical thinking, they start uh, suppressing their critical thinking uh, uh, skills comes from birth. Every child is born as a philosopher. Yeah. Unfortunately, that uh, God's gift for humanity, curiosity and questioning is punished in family and in school. If a kid is questioning the teacher, the teacher is like a pharaoh. Mm. arrogant oh i cannot make mistake who are you little kid you question me instead instead of promoting instead of encouraging them to question even sometimes i make deliberate errors so that i give a chance for students to correct my errors but 
The schools look at Sunnis uh, or Shias. Each teacher is an arrogant pharaoh as if they know everything and they always dictate. And then when go work someone, the mudir, mudir or whatever manager is it's, another yeah, dictator. Principal, and yeah. that kind of relationship create a sick mentality, create a schizophrenic psych, uh, psychological and mental schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And a person becomes multiple personality creates hypocrites, create people who conform, only conform for the sake of benefit or survival. That yeah. horrible hell to if, live in because if, there is no freedom. If I could pick up on the, what you said about that cognitive dissonance that happens when, you, when your mind knows something, but you want to believe something totally different and contrary or contradictory. I, I was speaking to an Arab yesterday. Um, and I and I thought he was quite a reasonable guy because he likes philosophy. He is open-minded. I asked him a question. I said, let's say there are two people equally the same. One is a non-Muslim compared to how we traditionally understand. Other one is the first person. He is non-Muslim. The other one is a Muslim, but he has a slave. Which one of those two is the worst one? And I was quite shocked by how quickly and how firm he continued to say that the Muslim, despite what he was doing, was a better guy of the two. I believe it. And, I, and I asked him, I said, take a step back, take a step back. Do you actually believe that? Do, do, do you think this is fair? And he just could not get his mind around that concept that, you know, he's got a cognitive dissonant experience happening right there where he knows something is wrong and yet hey, he can't bring himself up. Did you see this one here? No. Is it a tattoo or something? No. First time happened, this work accident. Ooh. I've been teaching for about 20 some five years. And uh, this was uh, a pen in my pocket, in the other shirt's pocket. Oh, Someone yeah. has broken and released. And I did it without my knowledge. It had, <laughs> this is ink today. And right. my wife, a <laughs> little bit, made me kind of say, what is it and stuff? I said, oh, this is I've been teaching for more than 20 years. This is first time my work-related accident. <laughs> well, that's not too bad then. That's not too bad. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> I didn't lose my finger or anything. It, 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 it had to. It had to happen one day. It. Therefore, if someone sees it, may have some different ideas. Does he have a tattoo or certain disease? No, it is my work-related uh, oh, accident. You, you disappoint me. I actually thought you were quite hip. <laughs> now i think you're just normal you're just a normal person without anything interesting about you but okay so let me ask you a few questions then i know you are pressed for time from from the quran only is a punishment for changing the religion for apostasy not at all hmm. okay. uh, yep. uh, it's very clear absolutely there is no such a thing Okay. And, and women, I find when I finish reading the Mus'haf a couple of times that, and I said this to my wife, I think we as men generally have been oppressing you for quite a long time. And I feel quite apologetic about it. Do you feel that all those, I had these, all those historical reports about women being deficient in intellect, etc., are non-Quranic? Absolutely. It's against the Quran. The Quran very clearly says, so all people, we created you from a man and a woman. If we go zakar and unsa like that. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. We have mm. created you from a male and female. We have made you in tribes and nations. Uh, so that you get to know each other. It is basically pluralism. You have colors like uh, the rainbow. Mm. Enjoy each other's differences. Learn from each other. In the akramakum, in the Correct. And, yeah. and the best, uh, yeah, the the best uh, um, um, honorable in the sight of God is the most righteous. In Allah alimu khabir. And of course, but here talks about men and women, and uh, that means being male and female is not. A criteria for uh, superiority. Mm. Uh, there's only criteria for superiority is doing good deed. Simple. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, it is like as racism, how it is evil according to the Quran, and the misogyny, 
and uh, discriminating between male and female is also there are few uh, there are only a couple of places there are differences and there are reasons for that it has nothing to do with women being low or not and they are distorted let me ask my last question so those of us who try and understand the Mus'haf by itself people always say you are bringing something new you are going against the grain of the society you guys are deviants you don't really belong here what you say is not islam what do you say to that well this is exactly the objections of mushriks and kafirs throughout the quran all messengers when they came when they showed demonstrated their ancestors have distorted the message of god the previous messengers they all said you are you are an innovation mm. for example chapter let's say here, let me all open this one. Saad, well, Quran is the zikri. Mm. Saad, 90. And the Quran that contains the reminder. Indeed, those we have rejected are in false pride and defiance. Mm. How many in a generation have we destroyed before them? They called out when it was far too late. They were surprised that a warner has come to them from among themselves. The ingray said, said, this is a magician, a liar. Has he made the gods into one god this is indeed a strange one they say can it be only quran without hadith plus sunnah plus our alims plus mazaib fatwa mm. you know many gods besides god the leaders among them went out walk walk away and remain patient to your gods this thing can be turned back we never heard of this from the people before us this is but an innovation, hmm. you remember? This is yes. an innovation. Yes. The... No. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> no, that's that's actually quite quite an As appropriate. The members one. being yes. sent down to him from between all of us, indeed, they are doubtful. Therefore, the Quran is revealed again through discovery of mathematical code of the Quran, is now a new revelation to us. Hmm. We all get revelation and our Laylatul Qadr. When the Quran is revealed to you, when you have access to the Quran, my Laylatul Qadr was first 84. Of July 1986. I did okay. the Quran alone. Inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Okay, well, thank Salaam you very much. Wa alaikum as-salam. Wa alaikum as-salam.